Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today is day 20 of daily CGI and uh, I have been focusing on fluid simulation in Blender. Um, I started out by reading the documentation, which is something that I almost always do. Uh, it was a little on the light side, but it was enough to get started. So I ran a few uh, tr experiments. I rendered out a few basic things. This, I put a torus. Uh, I was generating the geometry from uh, the torus and then uh, having it fall around a cup. So you'd think you'd want it to go into the cup, but I was trying to get it to avoid that. So this is that. Uh, it's not high resolution or anything. So I, I think uh, the water is very basic. Um, this is just, I think, straight out of the box, the first sort of settings that came up, right? Um, after that, I did the same. Oh, wait, that's the exact same thing. Hold on. Yeah, I did the same thing, but moved the torus to the side a little bit. Uh, to see if it would go in the cup. I uh, solidified the cup a little bit just just in case um, that was an issue uh, and the plane isn't high enough so you can see it's casting a bit of a shadow there. Uh, st still early days. Uh, then I put in Suzanne and had her move like rapidly left and right underneath a stream of water uh, coming from an inflow up above. It was probably just from generated from a circle that I applied a face to. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to see if she could interact with uh, the water and if so, how it would look at certain quality levels. So it's hard to see, but uh, she is in fact interacting and influencing the water. Um, if you, you see, you can see like splashes come out and she's affecting the st stream of water dropping, uh, flowing down. And then you can see the little trail that she's leaving underwater as well. Um, again, didn't change too many settings because there's like dozens of different settings and uh, it's going to take some time to learn what all of them do and in what situations to change them. Um, next up, just filling up a uh, cup of frosted glass uh, with blue colored water. Um, yeah, it's fairly straightforward. Uh, and clearly that's being generated from like a sphere. Uh, this one was a tutorial that I followed along with online. This was from a YouTube channel called Blender Made Easy. Uh, and the tutorial was called Blender Tutorial Satisfying Fluid Particle Animation. I'll put a link to the description down below as always. Uh, so you can go and check that out for yourself or follow along for yourself if you want to make something like this. Um, I thought this one was really cool. Um... It's quite heavy with all those particles and whatnot, but uh, luckily no crashes. Um, then this is a top-down view of just, uh, I wanted to, again, ge generate the geometry from, uh, uh, generate the water from actual geometry as opposed to having it flowing out of a particular uh, piece. So I created a sphere and then um, duplicated the sphere, scaled it down slightly, uh, cut the top off of the original sphere and made it into like a cup. Well, it's just a plane, like it doesn't have any thickness to it. And um, then I hid the additional uh, cylinder. Have I been saying sphere? I don't know. Uh, yeah, I hid the additional c cylinder, uh, which is just sitting there in the middle of the scene. So that's the top-down view. You can see a nice, like, sort of wave, wave forming there in the uh, confines of the bounding box or the domain. And then here's a different angle. Uh, so as you can see, it's not perfect. You can see uh, water droplets. I'll slow it down in a second when it repeats. Uh, you can see a water droplet stuck. Oh, some of it just leaks out as I rotate uh, the cup. Um, so I don't know why that is. It might not be high enough detail, but I don't know. I thought this looked pretty satisfying. Yeah, just more tests as to uh, what you can do, what you can't do, how to do things. Is there anything else here? Yeah, this is the last one. I created a uh, S-trap, which in plumbing is a type of uh, pipe setup where um, 
So you have like a sink or something and you turn the tap on, the water flows down um, this main pipe here and then at the bottom it sort of uh, accumulates and once it makes it up the second, um, like that centre section of the pipe, it then flows to the right and goes down uh, the drain and it basically creates a trap to stop uh, gas from coming back up from the sewer system um, and poisoning people in a household. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I think S-traps are banned in America these days, but we still have them in Australia. But, uh, yeah, this doesn't really look like fluid. Maybe it's moving too slow. Maybe it's too, uh, like, the level of vis viscosity. But uh, I just wanted to see how it behaved in a trap-like scenario. And uh, here it is. So it does seem to work. It pushes the water up. I turn the inflow off at the top. And then um, eventually the water stops flowing and then it starts backing up a little bit and balancing out. So that was cool. Uh, that's pretty much my experiments for the day. I, I will also say that I found a uh, piece, because I'm using Windows 11, I'm frustrated that in earlier versions of Windows they had a lot of cool tools and features and then, um, you know, as time goes on it's becoming, in my opinion, less and less intuitive. But I found out they have this thing called like Windows Power Toys or uh, Microsoft Power Toys. Um, it's basically like an open source kind of project where um, they gather together a bunch of different uh, features, uh, a, a, like more complex features that you can use in Windows. So um, I found this was useful for two things. They've got an always on top feature um, where you can press the shortcut uh, Windows, you know, like the Windows button, Windows Control T, and it'll um, keep the window that you've selected always on top. Nothing will, you can click out of it and it'll remain on top there. So that's useful. Um, and then there's another one, Color Picker, which allows you to, uh, hold on, uh, Windows Shift C is the default shortcut there and it allows you to use, yeah, it lets you use a color picker but anywhere in the Windows environment. So if you wanna grab a color from a different piece of software and uh, get that those values from say, the background on your desktop or a website or a video that you're playing, you can just use the uh, color picker and copy that those values and then paste them right into Blender. So I thought that was pretty useful. And was there anything else in it? Image resizer, it's got a resizing tool. Um, screen ruler. No, that's about it. Uh, that's what I've been using Windows Power Toys for. I thought it was worth mentioning. Um, yep, that's it for today. Got nothing else to say. I'm gonna continue learning fluid simulation in the background here. And um, I don't know, I'm gonna start jotting down notes as to what kind of settings can be used in what scenario and uh, when to sort of crank the numbers and how to, I think that tutorial sort of goes into how to decrease the amount of uh, detail displayed in the viewport, um, but then you can have the full amount of detail rendered out in the scene um, when you hit render. But yeah, it's just all sorts of things like that that I'm trying to learn. I um, hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, feel free to subscribe to the channel to follow along with my uh, learning journey and my learning progress. Uh, leave a thumbs up down below if you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one. Have a good one. See you next time.